The mantra that I was just chanting is called the Guru Mantra. The mantra of the Guru is called. I usually start all my workshops and my retreats by chanting this mantra. Why? Because whatever I am teaching, or whatever we are learning, in this process called yoga comes from a very long history. It is not something that came out of one person's imagination or something that was discovered 20 years ago. We are practicing something that has a tradition, tradition of thousands of years. And that tradition is still alive. We are the upholders of that tradition. When we chant this mantra, this is a mantra of gratitude. This is a mantra of thankfulness. The Guru mantra is a mantra of thankfulness. Being thankful for what has been passed down for thousands of years. Being grateful for having received that. And also, Reminding ourselves to be humble enough to pass on that wisdom that has come down from thousands of years to the next generation or whoever is sitting in the front. And that's why for me this mantra is a mantra of gratitude, gratefulness. But it's also a reminder that what I'm teaching comes from a tradition, comes from a long history, cultural history, a beautiful history which put human self-transformation as its basis. Today you will receive a lot of information. And I am saying it's information. Because when you apply that information, you will gain knowledge. When you apply that information in your life, you will gain knowledge. And when you realize that knowledge, you will get the wisdom. So I am here in front of you in all my humbleness, in all my simpleness, to just provide information. That's it. I am just a postman, <laughs> not even a salesman. <coughs> Today I am not here to argue with you or convert you or contradict you because today's topic is a little special. Today I am here to have a conversation. That's it. I mean, we will do some physical movement stuff also. But today I am here to have a conversation and compel ourselves to ask some questions. Questions about what we do and why we do what we do. Because one essential part of yoga learning is reflection. In ancient times when the students sat with the Guru, <coughs> the Guru compelled them to reflect because the Guru did not want the students to be blind followers. Blind following is religion. Reflecting and finding your clarity is spirituality.
रिफ्लेक्शन विचार इट इज कॉल्ड इन संस्कृत इज कॉल्ड विचार एंड इफ यू रीड द स्क्रिप्चर्स ऑफ योगा लाइक उपनिषद दे आर वेरी रिफ्लेक्शन बेस्ड द गुरु विल से दिस इज हाउ इट इज नाउ यू फाइंड आउट एंड द स्टूडेंट विल गो एंड कम आफ्टर ट्वेल्व फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी इयर्स एंड टेल द गुरु गुरु से यू गॉट इट कंप्लीटली रॉन्ग गो अगेन then again the disciple will come after 15 years you say okay but not quite go back <laughs> and then when the disciple comes the guru the disciple has nothing to say and the guru has nothing to question and he just understood so what we are doing in yoga is we are experiencing something <coughs> and how much ever we talk how much ever i give talks and workshops ultimately we all yogis have to realize that yoga is purely experience it's a realization which is beyond theory beyond your notes beyond your ears beyond the books that we study so number one question even question what i'm saying today question not out of argument say but question out of curiosity question out of curiosity why why should i bend so much in the asana do i really need to stand on my hands do i really need to lie down in shavasana for 10 15 minutes do i have to chant mantras enquire it's called enquiry reflection it's not out of uh, preconceived notion it's out of trying trying to find your way like small children small children are very curious there's no bias in their questioning mom why is it like that it's curious they're curious they're curious about the simplest of things and whatever the parents say becomes their belief system why i am saying this now is because earlier in the tradition of yoga there was a beautiful system of knowledge transfer there was a guru who had experienced the things that he or she was teaching and there was a disciple who was honest sincere faithful and courageous honest sincere faithful and courageous to seek find out explore you know in india they say that father is a protection principle mother is nurturing principle father protects mother nurtures and guru is both a real teacher a real guide is both you get the father in the guru you get the mother in the guru both because the job of a spiritual guide is a little much much broader job profile than a parent like a nanny like a nanny nanny has to protect the child too and then give food care tender love care put to sleep everything at both somewhere that is a little difficult nowadays for many reasons i'm not getting into that and that's why it's very important to reflect so i'm clarifying again i'm just building ground for my conversation and that will take some time that reflect enquire is the right word you cannot be we cannot be blind seekers anymore you have to have have the courage to enquire and if the teacher doesn't know the answer then explore yourself ultimately the answer will lie within you teacher is just the pointer <coughs> look there look there uh why this topic it's not just here i am been doing workshop on this topic for last say one year around the world why this topic because one like one year ago one of my students she sent me 
a picture of styles of yoga. I'm not chatting, I'm just looking at some, <laughs> I'm just looking at uh, that picture that she sent you. 52 styles of yoga have been mentioned in that picture. Acro, Aerial, Agama, Akhanda, Anusara, Bro, Corporate, Corporate style of yoga. Jiva Mukti, Nude, Odaka, I don't know, Paddleboard, Prenatal, Purna, Shadow, Swarupa, some Sanskrit terms don't even make sense. Restorative, Yoga Tune Up and many. And she said, look, and I was wondering what's happening there. Then I was doing a presentation, I opened yoga journal and I don't have a picture of that but I read yoga journal magazine listing another big list of things like this. And then I was wondering what is happening here? What is really happening? And I call it the great yoga hijack. The great yoga hijack because what these 52 things are, are styles of yoga. Now I am going to take a few minutes to explain this. I call it great yoga hijack because unfortunately we live in times where the whole of yoga has been hijacked by asana, including the term. Let's face the reality. And I'm sure all of you know the difference. Because once I was taught in one seminar and somebody says, but what's the difference? And I say, oh, it's going to take me half an hour now, <laughs> more. We live in times where yoga has been hijacked by asana. The part has hijacked the whole. <laughs> yoga is an eight course meal. We are only been given the soup and kicked out. We have paid for the eight course meals. That is number one point. We have to realize. I know the, all of you who are here, I know you are very, very sincere on your path. And that's why I am poking all of us. I also got poked. I also got pressed. My buttons were pressed. I became uncomfortable. So how can a little part, a tiny part of the whole spectrum of yoga dominate the conversation in modern times? So we all have to reflect on this. And then ask ourselves, am I a asana teacher or a yoga teacher? Today I'm going to give you a lot of reflection questions for yoga teachers and yoga students out here. Am I an asana teacher or a yoga teacher? I am not forcing any belief on you. As I said, I am just conversing and maybe asking questions. The questions that I am telling you to ask, I am asking myself too. Am I an asana teacher or am I a yoga teacher? If you don't know the difference, find out. But I am sure you all know it. The part is hijacking the whole. This, what we know as styles of yoga today are nothing but ways of doing asana. Isn't it? When I say I practice a younger style of yoga. What does it mean? Major, majority is about how the asanas are done. Ashtanga vinyasa, the way of doing asana. <coughs> Hot yoga, way of doing asana. So what in today's narrative, what we speak about as styles of yoga are not a complete orientation of yoga, but an ounce, a little bit of it. Nothing wrong, but we need to know. We need to know what we are sold. We need to know that we are paying for the whole, but are we buying a little bar? <coughs> That's something for us. That's first point, to ask yourself, 
what kind of a yoga practitioner I am and what is this what is this style reflect now as I read out to you I did not read out the 52 some of them are more hilarious than others <laughs> but do we really need all those 52s another question I mean, 52 is just what came in the... I'm sure by the time... I'm sure by the time I came from Amelia's home till here, a couple of more styles came up. <laughs> because every day on Facebook, people send me, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? You know, last, two weeks ago, it was people doing yoga with goat. And then last week, some people send me link, people doing yoga with beer. And then... On, on the International Yoga Day, I was sent uh, an invitation in a bar, from a bar in Bombay, in India, the homeland of yoga, where it was a one hour yoga party with beer. So even in the land of yoga, people are, I mean, God bless them. They are, they, they are on their path too. I am not being... Please, I might sound a little bitchy, but uh, I mean well for everybody. Everybody is in their own way, but I am here to ask questions like an advocate. So then the next point for us is asking ourselves, are we getting too lost in techniques? Mm. And then do we need so many techniques? For example, there is a yoga called Mantra Yoga. Have you heard of it? Mantra yoga means it's a it's an orientation of yoga which uses mantra. They don't do asanas and stuff. So what is what happens in mantra yoga? The the disciple goes to the guru. The guru gives one mantra. That's it. End of sadhana. The disciple goes after six months. Guru getting bored. Give me another mantra. Guru says, great, it's working. The mantra is working. You are getting bored? Fantastic. Continue. The Guru is not a service provider. Oh, disciple got bored. Oh my God, now he's going to give you a negative feedback. No, no, no. Okay, take this mantra. Guru is not, a, a real guide of yoga is not somebody who pleases the senses. That's why the disciple goes, Guru, I'm getting bored, I'm tired. Great. The mantra is working. It's challenging your mind. Continue. I can help you with support system. Come here to the ashram. Be with the other boys and girls. But continue. Don't drop. The question is, do we really need so many techniques? I'm gonna really leave you after four hours with some confusion if not clarity. But that confusion is good. It's good confusion. Sometimes we need to be thrown water on our face to wake up from the sleep. Do I really need so many techniques of asana? Why don't I stick to one? What does it indicate about myself? More techniques means less trust. A very important point. In spirituality, we are digging in one place deeper. We are not digging in ten places shallow. Whatever your path is, I am not criticizing any style of yoga. Whatever it is, go fully into it. Fully. It's like a relationship. You are married to your style of yoga. Now don't look here and there. How much ever excitable other styles are. And that's why I feel we, we live in, the, in a world of consumer over choice. 
in economics, in consumer psychology, is called the term is called consumer confusion. So much choice consumer has, consumer ends up making a wrong decision or consumer does not purchase. I was reading a case study, sorry I am now going to a business case study, but it is a good example uh, of a wine market in London. There was suddenly so much choice that people stopped drinking wine. People went to other brands of uh, types of alcohol. Consumer confusion. <laughs> Then we as conscious yogis, we have to ask ourselves, do I really need, like today yin yoga, tomorrow this yoga, then nowadays you have yoga on different uh, materials in air and in water and other, do I really need, am I just entertaining myself to avoid the real stuff? Because we are very smart at that. We are really smart at looking away or postponing. That's the question. When will I dive completely? Am I done flirting with techniques? Is it time for me to settle down with one technique and allow it to bring it to myself? These are questions. I'm not here to tell you anything, I'm just creating a list of questions. This confusion, let me assure you, is not a new thing. This confusion has existed for thousands of years, if not thousands, hundreds of years. For example, if you read Hatha Pradipika, have you heard of this scripture? Hatha Pradipika, it's a Hatha Yoga scripture. So Hatha Pradipika, in the, I think, third stanza, a third verse, the yogi Swatmaran says, the reason I am writing this scripture is because there are, there is too much confusion about yoga. So I want to put, put things straight, so I am writing this. He wrote this in 16th century. So you can imagine, 500 years down the line, we are still in the same confusion. More. More because it is accessible, like now we know how confused some other country is, you know. So, <laughs> confusion is a very essential part of human nature, so it is always going to be there. So let me assure you, we do not have to feel bad, oh modern yoga, no. Then there was another, there is another scripture, Hatharatnavali by an author called Srinivasa Bhatta, which was written in 17th century. He also says the same thing. Why am I writing this? Because too much confusion. So I want to just make it straight. So don't worry. This has happening, been happening for a long time and we are also in the same soup. But we have to find our own clarity. And that is individual responsibility. Finding your own clarity is individual responsibility. So get confused, find clarity. This brings us to the next question. That we have to start defining what yoga is. Hmm. If yoga is not asana, then what is yoga? We need to be clear about that. In the traditional sense, what is yoga? Union, yoga is union. Immediately the yogis will throw one definition at me. Yoga is union. Yeah, okay, but from the process point of view, what is yoga? All the yogas, huh? and I am saying the types of yoga, not the style. All the yogas can be stated to be techniques of refining the mind. All the yogas, karma yoga, jnana yoga, bhakti yoga, kundalini, raja yoga or whichever path, mantra yoga, laya yoga, nada yoga, whichever yogas that you take, the traditional classical yogas, we can put them all under one 
broad umbrella of process mental refinement mind transformation there is nothing else to yoga than that why because there are only two other things body mind soul breath we can assume is somewhere in between body and mind but yoga says body is just the reflection of the mind so the main main thing that we need to sort out is the mind so all the types of yogas all are nothing but methods to refine the mind methods to purify or clarify the mind till it reflects the light of the soul that's it that's the definition make the mirror so clean that you can see your real face remove the smudges the dark spots the dust from the mirror so you can see who you really are that's the goal and that state of yoga is called moksha have you heard of this word moksha very important word should be the yogi should know this moksha m o k s h a moksha moksha means complete freedom like in the morning when you go to the bathroom you look at yourself in the mirror and the mirror is dusty and you think oh, oh this is a rash on my face and you go no oh, what is that oh that's not me that's the mirror when you clean the mirror ah my face is back to normal <laughs> like those mirrors in the fairs no they make you look fat make you look thin it's just perception so the definition of yoga is yoga as a process and i'm talking about the yoga huh? the broad the complete aspect yoga as a process is a process of refining the mind cleaning the mind mind purification till we reflect our true self that's the definition of yoga